The Tales of the Fated by Taliesin Blevins Finds the Words 1. The Prelude of the Fated Six On green, by white, with pale moon's light, the fated six walked into night. With fire and kin, free of old sin, they joined unending Garu plight. By Raven's guidance they went out, and saw their kin in mighty rout. With rage and song, and history long, in conference firm they shared their doubt. When blood in fur gave answers full, and set confusion to a lull, while sadness spread, and also dread, a new life's fate they had to mull. A season's turn saw lives remade, the six did all that they were bade, for Liffy pained, her waters maimed, her life the six helped try to aid. By river's flow they stole away, at Wolftone Square they had to stay. The dead they faced, old souls displaced, and grudges deep they sought to slay. As night wore on and talk was had, death's heads in holy garments clad did stir up fuss, and doing thus made known their order, cruel and mad. A year's life lived, a year's time on, six lives drew closer into one, yet heart aches swelled and still withheld deep secrets all did act upon. A task the six were to fulfil, to meet Black Razor and instil at his request, to show their best and make clear all their varied skill. And meeting with the Shadow Lord, the six were neither pressed nor bored, but scorn and shun from lord to son made old Black Razor much abhorred. Divided by the night's event, tempers frayed as rage was spent, but parting ways, caught in a daze, the six prevented malcontent. Tis here our tale takes sordid turn, and Raven's vision bright did burn with tragedy, as joy did flee, and for the past we shall yet yearn. The six were set to meet the Fay, and homage to their Banrin pay, but found instead their mentors dead, and full of rage they stole away. Returning to their sacred land, they found that madness gripped their band. This rout they joined, all sense purloined. They sought to fill honour's demand. In chasing bleeding paws from thence to Tara grand, they were made tense, for that old hill lay dead and still. Thus crisis brought them all to sense. Their sept split up, their master knew. The six had justice to see through. They were all bade, find those who slayed our kin, repay the blood they drew. Those in the six of Fenris get faced down the mighty blood wolf's threat. Bites hard stood firm, pleased by this term, Bites hard's might did the wolf abet. From fay to mage they travelled clear, maintaining old agreements dear. They chased a lead, but found the seed of worm taint holding it severe. From flames of death the six did race to rest, and plan they sought out space. As they unwound, twas then they found their tragedy had grown apace. When making for home's safety sure, an unseen wall forced their detour. It hemmed them close, its mischief gross, and held them within Dublin's lure. Unbowed they sought out Darky Kell, who guided them where aid did dwell. But one who'd chance black spirals dance did seek to wring them their death knell. But here the six did stand their ground, and fought in fashion most profound. The first strike saw a foul for more by sleeps in fields and red arms downed. Their prime foe's power was unleashed, and saw stands in blood near deceased. With smoke's joints help, bites hard, did scalp the death blow on the wormish beast. Thus the six advanced their right, and took to heart a soul most bright, by silver bathed, by fault unscathed. Erebus' child made full the night. In light of this, they all endured to see their mark dead and interred, so out they went, and time they spent until a lead they had secured. 
Their mark's location was avowed, set skulking in his fortress proud. The plan was made. The six would raid and take the villain's life, they vowed. The cursed foe was quicker still, and hemmed the six's moves with skill. By Fenris get they quit this threat, and made to have their justice fill. The six unto their target went, and all their built-up rage was spent. At this end run, acting as one, their foe was soul from carcass rent. Of note, killed two leeches excelled, for by her claw the mark was felled. His head was hewn, his blood was strewn, and her pack's glory was upheld. Bites hard was struck near unto end, and frenzied to his body mend. When madness held, his frenzy swelled, until aid his pack mates did lend. It was knowledge of treachery that compounded all the butchery. Black Razor's turn to serve the worm broke spirits by this perjury. And so their rite of passage was complete. They went with little pause back to their sept. The six all swept to join in full their righteous cause. On green by white, with pale moon's light, the fated six walk into night. With fire and kin, steeped in new sin, we bear unbowed our endless plight. 2. The Tale of Liffy's Blessing When water's tears did fall upon the lands, and river's throat was squeezed by evil hands, great Liffy's life six souls made rapid plans to save as they were trained. They found at old Dublin's long ancient pale the future's grip on the past's safety frail. A threat this was to every native gale, and action was ordained. Though harmless souls were spared and sent away, their transport conflagrated to dismay the six, but failed to hinder them or stay their righteous zeal sustained. To Liffy's stolen water the six sped, and found foul wormish taint was being bled into it by a nexus crawler shed. This act the six arraigned. Into the place the six cut clear their course, and sought to end corruption at its source, so Liffy's dew from taint they did divorce, to healing land it drained. Once done, the six escaped the future's grip, and into Liffy's embrace they did dip, where of her sickness apart they did it strip, her blessings they had gained. 3. The Tale of Aaron's War What story shall I tell you? That you, my kin, may know the sordid tale of Aaron's war, and what it did bestow. It started so discreetly that none saw its advent, as six guru of fated stock about their business went. When these great six did capture the mad O'Leary leech, they called down blood in fur on her, and she gave thanks to each. But blood for blood was taken by O'Leary's foul kind, and some great scheme did come to fruit, to which all else were blind. From out the six's number one soul was ripped from life. In death guards the pack battle fierce, and left the world with strife. The rage could not be measured, which all the guru felt, and so to war they went, and swore revengement would be dealt. And so the war of shadows that had so far run cold became a blazing vendetta that burned through Dublin old. Through trial and toil repeated, the five did fight their course, as blows unseen did sap kind thought and their kinship divorce. Those of the Garu's allies felt blows reach them as well, but true division failed to pass, though pain and loss did swell. Darker tidings yet came through from Tara's bloodied hill, as Fina lives were cut away and all outcomes seemed ill. But vengeance on the vampires was dealt by Raven's eye. The bullies bled an acre red, and on old graves did die. 
It was in Bully's Acre, where drenched in gore excelled, frustrated and now free to kill many a leech he felled. With hope to save old Tara, the five were tasked to seek the Blood Wolf's aid to find a way to change their prospects bleak. The Blood Wolf's council told them through flux the sept must go, but Raven's five should stay behind, lest Dublin fall also. With Raven's blessed vision, the five did strive to find strange allies out in Dublin South that were not of their kind. Bastet they found that morn, and bad blood was put aside. The five indeed made history when with them they allied. With Dublin now protected and hidden schemes apace, the five were lured to Temple Bar and to the dark truth face. With moors and claws and speeches, our heroes ripped and tore. Despite the vampire's tricks and turns, soon they were all no more. Questions the ways killed he which commanded her pack's foes, throat splitter made her name ring true when she threw down her blows. All five took on the largest and crippled it with zeal, till finds the words claimed final strike and ended their ordeal. The final truth unfolded as, trapped by walls and shame, old Reinhard Farber's foul unlife the five did duly claim. They witnessed through recording the war's great architect. Victoria Rogers' message left all their contentment wrecked. For vengeance sake she crafted the war and its result, and used the five and all their kind to triumph and exult. Her parting words recorded revealed the final twist. In truth, she was Molly Malone, a legend in their midst. Enraged, confused, divided, the five went separate ways as chaos turned to unknown peace, and they let pass the days. Despite the final conquest having been robbed of them, the five made Dublin vampire free, and respite was welcome. Indeed, the dawn looked brighter, for by their labour hard, allies were gained and old foes slain, and they held Dublin's guard. Thus ends what I shall tell you, as you, my kin, now know the sordid tale of Aaron's war, and what it did bestow. 4. The Tale of Connell's Folly Aaron's war was won and finished, and all should have been well, but the fated five's partition birthed crisis much more fell. Drenched in gore felt great discontent at how his pack did act, and torn as to his future course he chose to break his pact. To spare his friends his deepest rage he left the raven's eye, thoughtless of how by parting thus all would wither and die. A glorious soul was this one, who by his deeds earned fame, but to him honour held him back, and wisdom equalled shame. But he is fled and vanished now, so let his story end, and we shall follow those who seek his damage yet to mend. The Dublin cairn lay empty, its every spirit gone, all hope seemed dead and lost for a Defeat then looked foregone. But scattered souls returned to one, and they all chose to fight, to find and rescue Raven's form, and set their crisis right. As the fated four made ready, a new soul joined their ranks. The killer of Baines pledged his aid, for which he received thanks. Out of Dublin five sojourned, and to the Umbra went. But one arrived before the rest, and unto death was sent. O oh, sorrow for Shiva Nibreen, she who questioned the ways, Horano's fell despondency sullied her final days. Bereaved, the rest continued on, their hearts broken and dim, and searching through the umbra deep, they met a prospect grim. To Erebus they had arrived, by guidance or by chance, they were all charged to cleanse their sin if they wished to advance. Together, they submerged themselves in full argent anguish, though through test and trial they did not break, 
nor any one languish. Scoured and cleansed and all made wise, for purest souls emerged, and unto their moral duty by Grand Kyrus were urged. The silver mistress aided them in maintaining their quest, and on they went to Pangea, feeling wiped clean and blessed. The silvered four fell down upon a new soul prowling keen, and to their pack they introduced a dead-eyed lupus lean. Among the primal trees and lakes these fated souls did hunt, they felled a mighty dinosaur and gorged by the lake front. Once fed, they found rest and repast within a sheltered cave, but were attacked by Smelodons, who for a fight did crave. The five Guru took on this pack of great saber-toothed cats. They felled one, and the rest withdrew to their safe habitats. In victory these five revelled, when out amongst them all came blessed ravens' ancestors, whom they followed with all. When the five reached their target's nests, at first they were perplexed, till newborn chicks did speak in tongues that ig ignorance was vexed. With two spirits to carry home, the five had thus prevailed, and exceeded all their own hopes to that which they availed. Their triumph was made yet greater than what they had yet learned. The Cairn's moon bridge was well restored, and their sept had returned. And so we conclude the story of how these fated five did all amend Connell's folly, and helped their Cairn survive. 5. The Tale of Blackwell's End I tell the tale of five Guru, the fated pack of raven's eye, who by great evil were assailed, an evil that to all was veiled, and which they would defy. From legendary victory this fated pack of raven's eye was soon to find their newest quest. They surged at bites the flame's behest to seek a lost ally. Eccentric words sent all the pack, our fated pack of raven's eye, to where Throat Splitter's friend did bleed, and where great evil grew to seed, and prospered full thereby. Though they escaped with their comrade, the fated pack of Raven's Eye were taunted by a voice unseen, as all their work it did demean, and made their dear friend die. But crueller works were yet to plague the fated pack of Raven's Eye, as memory of Nala dear was wiped from everyone's thoughts clear, and her friend's rage did fly. Dispirited by anguished loss, the pack returned to Raven's Eye, and bites the flame's mind's eye beheld her mate with her joyousness quelled, in darkness left to cry. A long dead sea dog's guidance led the fated pack of Raven's Eye to County Cork's verdant expanse, and rescued Fino Roach by chance with further boons nearby. A hidden, holy place they found, our fated pack of Raven's Eye, hidden by O'Donovan's keep, by moonlight locked and watched by sheep, a prize for which to vie. Now find the words he who once led the fated pack of Raven's Eye did unto naive folly fall to the distress and dread of all his packmates standing by. When back in Dublin, safe and sound, this fated pack of Raven's Eye, bites the flame learned her father was lost to dark oblivion's jaws, and her sadness swelled high. With this, they sought to turn the tide, this fated pack of Raven's Eye, to inflict wounds upon their foes, revenge themselves of all their woes, and best their quarry spry. With members of their sept on hand, the fated pack of Raven's Eye assaulted the stronghold of those who as angel and maid did pose to lead dreamers awry. The winged, worm-cursed beast did plunge the fated pack of Raven's Eye. In two darkness they could not light. He struck them down in their lost sight, struck them from on high. But they fought back as best they could, the fated pack of Raven's Eye, and drove their quarry skyward bound, where he was felled by sure shots round. His life she did deny. 
As for the maid, she did deceive the fated pack of Raven's Eye. Appearing as an innocent, she flew and off to London went in sordid schemes so sly. And even with their victory, the fated pack of Raven's Eye faced further taunts made from afar, as an old foe bid them to spar with him in days soon nigh. At this point, find the words was by the fated pack of Raven's Eye, from him's place of their command plucked, and punishment they did conduct, to which he did comply. And by his sept this fool part of the fated pack of Raven's Eye was shunned and made by all to strive for lost renown, if he should thrive to rise again full high. But strive he did, as all his pack, the fated pack of Raven's Eye, did with Cross's Dark Waters meet to discuss how they might defeat Black Razor with a lie. It was a simple thing to ask the fated pack of Raven's Eye, to make sure they could move unseen and to their nemesis convene, the fated had to die. While their foes made haste to waylay the fated pack of Raven's Eye, deceit was spread that they were dead, conceit that Pentex cut their thread, while northward they could vie. Concealed and safe at Dolphin's Hope, the fated pack of Raven's Eye improved their skills and attributes, grew mighty far from all their roots, until their time to fly. Replete, they flew to London Town, the fated pack of Raven's Eye, and stormed Black Razor's evil firm, guarded by all that serve the worm, whose defeat they would ply. Though harried by a hated voice, the fated pack of Raven's Eye with argent clave did end the life of that Nefandus who with knife and he- did health and joy belie. Though even here he still wounded the fated pack of Raven's Eye, for their kin that they'd hoped to save had been made those they'd sent to grave with no word of goodbye. We grieve most for Throat Splitter of the fated pack of Raven's Eye, for both her parents there were lost. A cruel trick bore a tragic cost, and blood from blood did pry. Dismayed, but wholly unperturbed, the fated pack of Raven's Eye burnt down Blackwell's corporate scheme, with help from London's spirit keen, and watched his great wealth fry. Emboldened now, they all set forth this fated pack of Raven's Eye to end Black Razor's life and all, and bypass those souls in his thrall who would his death deny. Within his home, Black Razor met the fated pack of Raven's Eye. Though short the battle was they fought, their clave served well, his death it wrought, and cut his mortal tie. A grim opponent he was to the fated pack of Raven's Eye, for as bite the flame healed with charm, he bit and stole her proffered arm, and forced her pained outcry. Once they had won, they had a task, this fated pack of Raven's Eye, for they disclosed the traitor's name who in amongst their sept would maim all those she could run by. Let rage and shame and defeat be how strikes from shadows is known by. For she shall be by all hated, though she was foiled by that fated pack of the raven's eye. Returning with their old foe's head, the fated pack of raven's eye came back within old Dublin's pale, but their sept's position was frail due to a fool gadfly. The stubborn farts who dared waylay the fated pack of Raven's Eye prescribed to notions rank and blunt that proved each one a massive cunt, a rank-walking pigsty. Standing by their rightful yarl, the fated pack of Raven's Eye bore witness to the victory of cunning over bigotry that she did full apply. And even as dark times befell the fated pack of Raven's Eye, they kept their courage and their will They rendered many frail hearts still, they firmed each brave ally. So think you all on all the deeds the fated pack of Raven's Eye have done to further Gaia's cause, and how their legend in song was how they shall be known by. Unbowed, unbroken, we all stand, our fated sept of Raven's Eye. Let friend and foe know awe and fear, when all those who should meet us hear our righteous battle cry. 6. 
The Tale of Error's Fate A tide was turned in Raven's Eye, and hope from fear was born anew. The Guru vowed their foes would die, and Gaia's sacred light shine true. Thus, Liffy's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Era's daughters and sons. The five brave souls who led this turn, and those souls who had been and gone, inspired the raven's eye to yearn for victory in their new dawn. Thus, Liffy's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Era's daughters and sons. The cunning dead eye laid a chart to cleanse the soul of great Liffy with moonshine net a work of art to purify her mouth to lee thus liffy's blessed the fated ones fought for era's daughters and sons but first the fated ones did seek their friendships fresh and allies aged the kithane proud the bastet sleek the spirits strong the dead enraged thus liffy's blessed the fated ones fought for era's daughters and sons Find the words met the Bastet and proved his honour to their Khan. Throat splitter earned with toil and sweat, the Kithane's enmity withdrawn. Thus Liffy's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Era's daughters and sons. Dead eye and bites the flame both went and brokered spirit friendship plain. Killer of banes vowed his consent, the dead would render their foes slain. Thus Liffy's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Era's daughters and sons. When all their allies were called up, the fated journeyed to avert more taint in Liffy building up, more wormish matter causing hurt. Thus Liffy's blessed the fated ones, fought for Era's daughters and sons. They went to where they thought they could destroy the evil at its source, but one they thought they'd killed for good derided them and broke their course. Thus Liffy's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Era's daughters and sons. The scope and scale of Liffy's spoil enshrouded all the Emerald Isle, its claws dug deep in Era's soil, its people bent to schemes most vile. Thus Liffy's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Era's daughters and sons. But still the fated pressed their goal and travelled to their second mark. They would blow up where grave control over Liffy was held most dark. Thus Liffy's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Era's daughters and sons. As they ensured dreamers were spared the demolition of that site, a former in waiting declared that bites the flame's life he would smite. Thus Liffy's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Era's daughters and sons. Not fire, nor force, nor building's fall could maim or murder bites the flame. The worm's vile trick thus lost its pall, and all its taunting jeers proved lame. Thus Liffy's blessed the fated ones, fought for Era's daughters and sons. When retreating from this success, the fated also did abscond with gadgets designed to assess, but from which water's taint was spawned. Thus Liffy's blessed the fated ones, fought for Era's daughters and sons. But these they held, as first they sought to earn mighty new gifts at length. These gifts were all bartered and bought, and the fated gained newfound strength. Thus Liffy's blessed the fated ones, fought for Era's daughters and sons. A dire warning Liffy bestowed on finds the words. She did imply that to succeed and walk their road, an unknown female had to die. Thus Liffy's blessed the fated ones, fought for Era's daughters and sons. At this the fated sought a mind who could incite Era's masses, and at Trinity they did find a kindred soul between classes. Thus Liffy's blessed the fated ones, fought for Era's daughters and sons. Killian Masterson, whose life was to good cause dedicated, would show Ireland its source of strife, its people's rage predicated. Thus Liffy's blessed the fated ones, fought for Era's daughters and sons. At last the time to act arrived, to trawl the Liffy clear of fault, to bring back all her strength revived while under constant worm assault. Thus Liffy's blessed the fated ones, fought for Era's daughters and sons. 
Starting at Fair Liffey's Firth, the fated worked with firm resolve, even marred by Ponsonby's mirth, and Magecraft saw his work devolve. Thus Liffey's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Aera's daughters and sons. On they went through Formori threat, and with the Blood Wolf's aid as well, until their kinfolk were beset by Gina Masterson the fell. Thus Liffey's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Aera's daughters and sons. Facing Gina in Phoenix Park, killer of banes found truth laid bare. He learned, as Gina's death came stark, that he was great Kushulan's heir. Thus Liffey's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Aera's daughters and sons. On they went, as Arnold's order waylaid them for but short time. They trawled past Phoenix's border, and saw wraiths rend banes into slime. Thus Liffey's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Aera's daughters and sons. When their net caught on ancient snare, a wormish jail the fated broke, and ancient banshee cleaved the air, and they were awestruck as she spoke. Thus Liffey's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Aera's daughters and sons. While all this passed, terrible gloom befell these souls as they fought on. Those that they loved were sent to doom, and hope for their future seemed gone. Thus Liffey's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Aera's daughters and sons. As dawn approached, the fated met a man named Lou, who offered choice, to follow true their course still set, or change it, and in change rejoice. Thus Liffey's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Aera's daughters and sons. A stitch in time they all went through, and two ancient Tara did cleave to find their enemy. They flew to Clan McAlpin's dark fate weave. Thus Liffey's blessed the fated ones, fought for Aera's daughters and sons. With aid from a verbena mage and mighty stags stirring address, the fated passed beyond all age to flux, where chaos bars egress. Thus Liffey's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Aera's daughters and sons. Trapped in the flux, the fated spoke to many spirits of the wild, and found their Jarl's soul in a cloak of order where all else beguiled. Thus Liffey's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Aera's daughters and sons. After conference and full rest, the fated flew to change their fate, to save lives that had been suppressed at risk of loss of equal weight. Thus Liffey's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Aera's daughters and sons. Mifanwi Blevins soon was saved, though broken by the fight was she. Aideen Monaher's life was shaved, but from death's embrace she did flee. Thus Liffey's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Aera's daughters and sons. Bites the flame, and Killer of Banes warred at the Fena's sacred ground, and there they made most worthy gains till all their pack each other found. Thus Liffey's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Aera's daughters and sons. Unbroken and unbowed they faced McAlpin out on Tara's hill, and though he fought in ways debased, the fated earned their greatest kill. Thus Liffey's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Aera's daughters and sons. McAlpin and Kushulan's heir engaged in joust of spears divine. Killer of Banes dodged death with flair and severed Ken McAlpin's spine. Thus Liffey's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Aera's daughters and sons. At last, by Tara's royal stone, Kushulan's heir was named Ari. The seed of a new dawn was sown, and Aera's every soul breathed free. Thus Liffey's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Aera's daughters and sons. What further trials they underwent need not be said, though I was there, for there my talent was best spent with them, my friends without compare. Thus Liffey's blessed, the fated ones, fought for Aera's daughters and sons. And now that fate the fated gained is all of yours in full to live. Our tale shall be, I hope, maintained by you, and it your full care give. Thus Liffey's blessed, the fated ones, Fought for Aera's daughters and sons.